welcome again to Tiger Carpenter. Today I'm going to attach the caster wheels to the heavy wooden workbench, which is this little baby here. It's very heavy. Let me see if I can even lift it. Oh. <coughs> I can't lift it, which means it will be well above 200 kilograms, maybe 450 pounds. It's made from ancient hardwood. It's really, really heavy and dense. So before we start, I want to show you what happened to the wheel cart, which I made for my thicknesser. I drilled, I pre-drilled the pilot holes into the end grain and because this cart was carrying heavy load the thicknesser itself is about 30 kilograms it's uh, 70 pounds plus the vibrations from the machine and the sharp screws they caused the split in one of the legs which is visible here. Later on I will take the photo and zoom on the corner. So what I learned from this, uh, you should not put the screw too near to the edge of the leg and I don't want to use the screws anymore. I will use stainless steel threaded inserts and bolts as well as I will secure the corners of the leg bottoms with the aluminum uh, angled profiles so I believe this will be overkill but nevertheless this workbench will last me forever I want to make sure that there, there will be not a chance of splitting the legs in this workbench because it's very precious to me and also I, I want to create a heavy-duty tool which I can use lifelong so let's get started so let's flip this workbench over <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that was easy. This gives us the rare opportunity to see what's underneath my hood. Have a look. Okay, so this is the bottom of my workbench. As you can see, I put the six millimeters thick aluminum bars and I screwed them to the bottom of the bench so this way I can prevent warping and it pretty much did the job over time and the bench has not warped at all and here you have the heavy duty vise and here are the legs that I will attach the heavy duty wheel casters to Okay, so the first thing we are going to do will be cutting the aluminum angle profile to match the width of the leg. I already measured it with the combination square. We have to measure to the right side of the blade. Don't make the same mistake that I made many times. So I'm going to lock it. A 
let's have a look at the cut looks perfect so that's how I will make this anti-split mechanism there will be aluminum angle profile on two sides of the leg uh, bolted together and then I will only drill the caster wheels uh, threaded inserts now I can use the piece that is already cut to as a reference to make the remaining pieces identical again remember that we want to cut on the right side of the blade I honestly made this mistake like thousands of times you have to measure to the blade on the right side and to the right edge of the material I can clamp it so the cut quality is very good which again proves the table saw is perfect for cutting aluminum let's compare these two pieces yep they are the same that's the previous one that's the new one the cut quality is good the size is good So now I'm going to put it on the legs to see roughly the layout. In my workbench I didn't have enough thick material to make all the four legs uniform. So these legs are not as wide or not as thick as these two. That's why <coughs> for these legs I will have to trim one angle and cut off maybe 10 11 mm because it's a narrow cut and the material is also narrow so I will have to put extra caution I'm just going to put the blade slightly above the material vertical wall will be sliding on the fence and then I will push it here and here Hopefully this will make the safe cut. Nevertheless, looks like it went well. The piece looks nice, but it's very hot. So this should be the last cut for today okay so the last cut was made now i can test on the leg looks good now <coughs> let's have a look at our caster wheel it's a flat bed with the four holes uh, i will position it in the center I will measure it later on this just for reference and the bolts connecting these two pieces of the aluminum angle should not conflict with the bolts holding the caster and also I don't want the bolts to be too near to the edge so I estimate the bolts holds to be somewhere here So now I can bring this to the drill press, set up the fence and the stop block and we will drill these holes for the bolts that will be connecting these two sides. Let's go. Looks good. So now we can drill all the holes in the same position. As a lubricant I'm using the engine oil, you can use anything as long as you can cool down the drill bit. 
safety glasses. Okay, the hole is nice and clean. <clears throat> this kind of chips is what we really want when we cut metal, not just the aluminum, because uh, this will keep your drill bit sharp. If you start getting powdery spatter, then you have the dull drill bit and you are applying wrong amount of pressure. So when I already got, when I started the hole, I continued with the steady and slow pressure. Also for the soft metals we use uh, low rotation speed, low RPMs. By using the drill press, of course, we have the advantage of the strength of the drill press and thanks to using the fence and the stop block we have the repeat, repeatable accuracy. But of course, if you don't have the drill press, you still can make it with the hand drill. You just need to maybe make some jig that will ensure the distance is the same. <laughs> if you remember to use lubricant or coolant, I would rather call it a coolant, your drill bit will remain sharp. I'm using Bosch quality drill bit that also saves me a lot of money. Even when you buy it, you think it's a little bit more expensive, but you can use it 10 times longer than the imported drills. I really like this kind of chips because I know that it's just cutting the material, not, not grinding it. You can see the holes are very crisp. And the last two pieces in this position of the stop block. You know, when you apply a proper pressure and the RPM, then the drill bit is not even getting hot. When you grind through the material, then you get the overheating and melting and funny stuff. This kind of technique is really, really effective. Done. So now I am going to move the stop block to adjust the stop block uh, in the identical distance from the edge. I use this hole. The chips are nice. Now is the moment of truth. I don't know if you can see it, but it's perfectly matching. So we have two remaining legs to install. Let me mark it a little bit.
Okay. So this is our stainless steel jig that allows us to start the hole perpendicular to the surface. So now I will use this pre-drilled blind hole to guide me all the way in. Felt like we went all the way through. Let's put the washer. I always forget about the washer. Okay, it went all the way through, which is a good sign. So now we are using this bolt as a clamp on one side, which makes our life easier. However, I will clamp it additionally. Later on I will trim these bolts on the other side. Okay, so we have the last leg. Hammer friend. Okay, let's drill these holes using the drill press. I want to drill the hole which is only 12 millimeters below the aluminum angle. Aluminum angle profiles in place with a little help from our friend Cold Hammer. Okay, so they are locked now. Now I am going to drill. I already set the depth of the stainless steel ring. Now I will straight away proceed with tapping. Okay, so now the four holes are tapped and we can test it. Okay, so this is M6 bolt and as you can see it's going in easily. And this is really the most enjoy, enjoyable part of this kind of project when you can assemble it. I have to say, this works so well. I can tighten it and it's really not going anywhere. So since I'm already here, I'm going to trim these bolts. Okay. 
the really final step is the tightening of these bolts which will conclude today's build okay time to flip the bench and see what we achieved today okay and it's moving yes don't forget to like and subscribe tiger carpenter see you again <laughs>